In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. Don't you love living on the mountaintops with the Lord? You know the times that the Lord seems so near and precious. Life is good. The experience, the emotion is good. But I'm here to tell you that there are some lessons that can only be learned in the valley. We return today to a very familiar scene. In our last study, we were in Mark chapter 9, the record of the transfiguration of Christ. Now, the transfiguration is recorded for us in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and all three gospel writers also record for us an event that happens immediately after the transfiguration. Let's look at Luke's account today in Luke chapter number 9. The disciples have been on the mountain with Jesus. Remember, it is good for us to be here. And the Lord, no doubt, taught them some amazing lessons on that mountain. But now, he leads them off the mountain and down into the valley. We find the story beginning in Luke chapter number 9, beginning in verse number 37. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child, and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, every one at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. Isn't it interesting that it's in the context of this miracle that our Lord has a message? Remember, all of the miracles have a message. The, the miracles always lead us back to who Christ is and to why he came. They tell me that the famous painter Raphael, his last painting was one canvas, and on the canvas you know, there were two pictures on one hand, the transfiguration on the mount, and on the other hand, the futile attempts of the disciples down in the valley. It's interesting that both of these are realities, and in both settings, Christ is at work, and in both settings, the disciples had much to learn. I say again, we love the mountains, don't we? But between every mountaintop, there's always a valley. Both are realities in our lives. These are, these are not separate. These are not disconnected. The reminders that in every circumstance, God is at work. Friends, the most fertile ground is in the valley. That's where God really grows us. And so what are some of the lessons we learn in the valley? Well, first of all, there's a lesson from the people. What's the lesson we learn from the people? The lesson is this. There will always be hurting hearts. Always. The Bible says there were much people. That's the story of our world right now, much people, hurting people. Think of this father crying out pitifully, mine only child. Do You see the picture not only of multitudes but of individuals. Aren't you glad Jesus not only sees the masses but is touched with a heart of one man who's broken? Think of this. Here is the only begotten son whose heart is moved by the brokenness of this father. All around us, there are hurting people. Everywhere you look, there are, there are needy souls. And the lesson from the people is that there will always be hurting hearts. And there's a lesson from the devil. What's the lesson from the devil? Expect spiritual opposition. As surely as God is working, Satan is fighting. As a matter of fact, when you see the greatest victories, just brace yourself, get ready. The devil is always going to push back. It was after the Mount of Transfiguration 
It was after the revelation of Christ's glory that Satan rears his ugly head up. Every believer must prepare for conflict. If you're going to move forward, there will always be friction. And so there's a lesson from the people. There's a lesson from the devil. And then there's a lesson from the disciples. What's the lesson from the disciples? You ready? Apart from faith, we are powerless. In fact, in Matthew's record of the same story in Matthew chapter number 17, the disciples have a conversation with the Lord Jesus, and they want to know why he, why they were not able to cast out this demon out of this boy. And our Lord Jesus plainly tells them that this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. In our record that we've read here in Luke chapter 9, he reproves their faithlessness. It was not the father's faithlessness. He had brought him to Jesus. It was the faithlessness of the disciples. And isn't that ironic? We, we want to talk about a world that fails to believe God. But what about us? What about our lack of faith and confidence in the Lord? What about our lack of, of prayerfulness? Oh, my friends, you know what we need? We need a generation of Christians to believe that no matter how wicked the world is, how hurting hearts are, how, how hateful the devil may be, that our God is more than enough, that Christ is enough. And apart from that faith, we are powerless people. In fact, the Bible tells us plainly they could not cast this de- demon out. They could not. Friend, you cannot. I cannot. Listen to the words of Jesus in another portion of Scripture. Without me, ye can do nothing. With God, all things are possible. But without him, we can do absolutely nothing. So there's a lesson from the people. There's hurting souls. There's a lesson from the devil. Expect spiritual opposition. There's a lesson from the disciples. Apart from faith, we are powerless. Don't miss the most important lesson. There's a lesson from the Lord Jesus. And what is it? We must always keep our eyes on the cross. Do you find it interesting that in the midst of this spiritual opposition, in the midst of of this demonic attack, in the midst of all this, Christ's eyes are fixed on the cross. And the first words out of his mouth, while they're all still marveling over the miracle that he performed, the very first words have to do with why he came. He's headed to the cross. Even in success, even in victory, he refused to be distracted. Now, this is what we miss, you see. Uh, we, we get in the valleys of life, and all we want is to get to the next mountain. We miss what the Lord is saying. We miss what the Lord is doing. Every valley leads you to the cross. In the valleys, Christ is revealing to us more of his heart, more of his purpose, more of what he desires for every one of us. Stop looking for the next mountain and look instead for what God is trying to teach you in this valley. In the valley, we learn the reality of the cross. In the valley, we learn to die to self. In the valley, we see what God alone can do. We'll come back in another series of studies to look at the the parables and teachings and sermons of Christ. But let me just point out as a footnote today and that they really are woven into the miracles. The Lord is holding class, you see, in the most unusual circumstances because it's in every difficulty that the Lord is trying to teach us something. Maybe, maybe, instead of asking why something happened or why something didn't go the way we wanted it to, we should be asking this question, what, Lord? Lord, what is it you want to teach me in this valley? I think it boils down to one great truth. Christ is enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the Miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you're making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough.